Pleasure to be here today. So I'll just start off with some background. Um, as you'll all be aware, we have a rapidly ageing population. So in 2015, there were approximately 900 million adults aged 60 years and older worldwide. By 2050, this figure is set to more than double to over 2 billion, and one in five people will be aged 60 years and older. And beyond 2050, it's set to rise even further, and in the UK, it's predicted that one in three babies born this year will reach their 100th birthday. Now, ageing is associated with an increased prevalence of sleep disturbances, and approximately half of older adults report some type of chronic sleep complaint. So this could be um, waking up during the night, napping during the day, having trouble falling asleep, waking up too early and not, getting be not being able to get back to sleep, or waking and not feeling rested or restored. And sleep disturbances are commonly reported across a wide range of age-associated psychiatric and neurological illnesses, including Alzheimer's disease, late-life depression, and also post-stroke. And in many of these cases, bidirectional pathways have been proposed in which sleep problems not only result from the disease pathology, but are also an important risk factor that precedes diagnosis. As well as being associated with an increased prevalence of sleep disturbances, ageing is also associated with decline in white matter structure. And white matter degeneration is again an early feature of many age-associated psychiatric and neurological conditions. And it's been shown to be predictive of incident stroke and dementia. And interestingly, there's growing evidence to support links between sleep quality and white matter structure. So, for example, gene expression studies have shown that brain transcripts involved in myelin synthesis and myelin maintenance are upregulated during sleep. And the proliferation of oligodendrocyte precursor cells, which go on to create the myelin sheaf, has also been shown to double during sleep. So we're able to examine white matter microstructure non-invasively using an MRI technique called diffusion tensor imaging, or DTI, which is based upon the diffusion of water in neural tissue. So if you've got unrestricted mobility of water molecules in all directions, then diffusion can occur equally in all directions and can be modelled as a sphere. So for example, this is the case in CSF. In contrast, if you've got restricted mobility of water molecules in any direction, then diffusion is termed anisotropic, and it can be modelled as an ellipsoid. And this is the case in white matter tracks, where you have the myelin sheaths and the parallel arrangement of fibres, which create barriers to perpendicular diffusion. And DTI can uniquely help study the integrity of white matter tracks by estimating the degree of anisotropy, so fractional anisotropy, FA, which provides a measure of the shape of the ellipsoid. And it ranges from zero if diffusion is isotropic and occurring in all directions to one if diffusion is perfectly anisotropic and occurring in a single direction. We can also look at axial diffusivity, which provides a measure of diffusivity parallel to the white matter tract and radial diffusivity, which provides a measure of diffusivity perpendicular to the white matter tract. So if we hypothesize that sleep plays a role in the maintenance of the white myelin sleeve, sheath, um, sleep disturbances would lead to degeneration or damage to the myelin sheath, and then this would be reflected by increased radial diffusivity as there'd be fewer barriers to perpendicular diffusion, and decreased FA as the ellipsoid would be more spherical in shape. And to date, there's been two DTI studies that have ex explored this hypothesis by comparing participants with a clinical diagnosis of insomnia to control participants. So in 2013, Kai Spiegelharder and colleagues reported reduced FA in the right anterior cap internal capsule with a trend in the left internal capsule in a sample of 59 participants. And this year, Lee et al. reported reduced FA and increased radial diffusivity in an overlapping but slightly more widespread frontal subcortical tracts in a sample of 53 participants. But as we've discussed, poor sleep isn't just reported by people with clinically defined insomnia, but it's prevalent in general populations. So we set out to examine the relationship between poor sleep and DTI measures to see if similar white matter hallmarks can be observed in non-clinical populations. 
So we included 448 participants in this analysis and exclusion criteria included major neurological illness, a diagnosis of dementia, sleep apnea or any prescribed medication for a sleep disorder. And we used the Pittsburgh Sleep Quality Index to uh, classify people as good or poor sleepers and 147 um, participants, so approximately a third of all our participants were classified as poor sleepers as shown in red. And comparing the groups, the good and poor sleepers were similar in terms of age, on average 69 years old. The poor sleepers contained a higher proportion of females. Um, they weren't different in terms of their education level, which fell between A-levels taken at 18 in the UK and degree level. We also looked at a variety of health and lifestyle measures. So the groups didn't differ in terms of their BMI levels or their blood pressure but the poor sleepers did display a significantly higher level of depressive symptoms. We also <clears throat> looked at psychotropic medication. Only 16 participants reported being on antidepressants or anxiolytics, and the incidence wasn't significantly different between the groups. Physical activity, again, didn't differ between the groups, and nor did general cognition, which we, use, which we measured using the MOCA scale. Participants also completed an hour-long battery of uh, cognitive tests that covered three main cognitive domains. So our tests of executive function included um, digit span, fluency, and trail-making test B. And you can see that the poor sleepers who are shown in red tended to perform worse in all of the tests. And the star on the trail-making test B indicates that higher scores represent worse performance. But there were no significant differences between the groups when we did the stats. Similarly, for memory, we didn't find any significant differences between groups in measures covering verbal and visual memory and immediate recall, delayed recall, and recognition tasks. And then finally, in pen and paper and computerized tests of processing speed, again, we didn't find any significant differences between groups. However, despite there not being any differences between groups in their cognition, we did find differences in white matter measures. So these graphs display that um, average FA is across all white matter tracts is reduced in the poor sleepers and average axial diffusivity and radial diffusivity are increased consistent with our hypotheses. And when we performed voxelwise analysis, then we found significant differences primarily within frontal subcortical tracts. And these were most widespread for radial diffusivity. So this movie moves up through the brain from the bottom to the top and all the regions which were significantly different between groups as shown in red. And all of those results were after covariant for age, sex and education. Even after we added in BMI, blood pressure, depressive symptoms, psychotropic medication, physical activity, and uh, MOCA score as covariates, then the regions shown here in red remain significantly different for radial diffusivity. And if we compare the anatomy of these findings to those which were found to be significant in clinically diagnosed insomnia, where confounds such as psychiatric comorbidity was carefully excluded, then you can quite clearly see the parallels in the anatomy of these results. So just to conclude, our three main findings were that current poor sleep quality was associated with reduced FA and increased axial and radial diffusivity. Uh, widespread frontal subcortical tracts encompassing region, regions previously reported as altered in insomnia were affected, and radial diffusivity findings in particular remained significant after correcting for demographics, general cognition, health and lifestyle measures. As this was a cross-sectional study, then um, we're not able to comment on causality, and it may be that poor sleep causes decline in white matter structure, or it might be that decline in white matter structure in circuits that govern sleep and wakefulness contribute to the development of poor sleep. Also, third factors like depressive symptoms, whilst I don't think they could completely explain the relationship, may play a role in mediating the relationships we see. And if cross-sectional findings such as ours can be replicated, then hopefully interventional studies will help answer some of the questions on directionality. So just to thank all the participants who took part in our study, uh, my colleagues and also the funders.